there's probably no place where we see more of the impact when it comes to sexuality than what we see in adolescence. And, and um, the impact even of something as some would say innocuous as video games where we see uh, uh, a hypersexuality and it has worked its way down into uh, younger and younger ages uh, like this young lady who's a, a little girl basically and who has been sexualized by the kind of uh, uh, stuff that she wears. Um, although physical maturation fosters a sexual dimension uh, to adolescence emerging identity, sexual expression varies greatly with time and culture. And we, we certainly have to take these into account when we're talking about uh, teenage sexuality. And you can look back in time at a variety of books and so forth and see it. Uh, what's interesting is compared to European teens, uh, and, and this is one of these places where you see the bias of the particular writers of your book themselves. Um, and, I, and I'll explain that in a minute. But compared to European teens, American teens uh, have a higher, uh, uh, higher uh, teenage pregnancy rate. And one would have to ask, why is that so? Um, and one reason that uh, your book at least identifies for this is um, uh, poor communication that occurs uh, for teens regarding their sexuality and regarding uh, pregnancy and consequences of sex, for example, birth control. And so uh, your book would identify the fact that uh, many teenagers are uncomfortable discussing contraception with their parents, and because of that, um, uh, they feel guilty, and because of the guilt, they uh, hide what they're doing, which leads to, uh, naturally leads to sexual activity that results in unplanned pregnancies. Um, and I, I would push back. Uh, against that notion. Now, I'm not naive enough to say or to think that uh, the shame comes into play. I Clearly, I think it does for a lot of teenagers and the guilt that's related to that. But I don't think it's just poor communication. I think it's a wider cultural problem than just communication with teens. I think in many cases in middle school and high school, there's a lot of communication about uh, pregnancy and unplanned pregnancy and contraception, even against parents' wishes. And because of that, then, is it just uh, because of a lack of education that's the issue? Uh, or is it a larger problem that is uh, the deteriorating uh, uh, value base that is becoming more and more prevalent in our culture today uh, that contributes to a minimization, if you will, of sexual activity at all. Um, and so sexually active teens, the other aspect that comes into play that leads to this is the use of alcohol, ETOH is the chemical um, designation that I will often use. You may re remember that from when we were talking about, um, when we were talking about alcohol use. The other thing is media, and uh, all you have to do is look at the current slate of, of uh, new television programs on television today, and one of the ones that catches your attention the quickest, at least it does mine, and it's probably because of my age, is the idea of the new normal. And essentially, it's a family that uh, has gay and lesbian members and family is not defined by biological ties. Uh, family is defined by social ties. And we, they, th that comes into play when we're talking about sexual activity at all. And, and 
that's that's part of this backdrop when we're talking about adolescent um, and adolescent sexuality is uh, increasingly the media environment in which sexuality is discussed and played out media portrays an image of consequences less all right and that what I'll write it down so you catch it is is consequence less sexual activity and that's essentially what contraception allows us to do is that we don't suffer any consequences of sexuality and therefore it minimizes the impact uh, of um, pervasive sexuality and then as a result then w why would teens not engage in something that's fun with no consequences um, and so the whole idea of teenage pregnancy is a minor technicality if you will partly because of abortion that can save the teenager from a, an unwanted pregnancy um, or the day after pill uh, is another uh, contraceptive device uh, that uh, rescues from consequences of, of sexual activity so clearly I think uh, the, the backdrop to this sexuality is the removal of, of consequences and that has had a huge impact now when I say that it's not saying well uh, what would you have us do well <laughs> uh, to be blunt is don't have sex if you don't want the consequences but since we are in a place where now there's consequences are removed then you're going to have to fall back really on, on the values you hold regarding uh, virginity and regarding uh, treating people with dignity not as objects uh, and that may sound very old-fashioned but uh, there's more to than that than just the whole idea of virginity it has to do with uh, uh, human dignity treating each other as objects as uh, uh, things that can be used to experience pleasure uh, is is ultimately the degradation of human dignity and that's just for what it's worth it's something that uh, you, you know you didn't ask for but it's my own commentary in watching and talking to adolescents over many many years and uh, watching what happens as a result of some of these decisions